If I were to get a dollar every time I got asked this question that how to become an AI engineer, I might have thousands of dollars by now. In this video, I will try to answer it in as practical terms as possible given the context of today's industry as how you can become an AI engineer, whether you are just starting out or you are a seasoned IT professional you can follow these tips and guidelines to become an AI engineer in no time. And I'm not exaggerating and it is not a clickbaity sort of thing. I really mean it because I believe that it is not necessary to have a PhD in machine learning or AI to become an AI engineer. So let's get started. To become a successful AI engineer, you need to start by building a strong foundation in programming languages. That's true. Don't think that with all this advent of um, coding assistance, open Devon and all that stuff, you don't need to code, you still need to code. Just consider AI or all of these coding assistants as your buddies, as your companions. Make sure that you at least learn one programming language and learn it right. It could be Python, it could be Java, or it could be even C or C++. Because that will teach you the importance of data structures and algorithms and also the code optimization. You also need to deepen your knowledge in machine learning frameworks like TensorFlow, PyTorch, Keras, and you need to explore deep learning concepts such as neural networks, natural language processing, and computer vision. You don't have to learn all that statistical equations, mathematical, algebra, uh, calculus, or anything like that. You don't have to master all of those things at all, but at least at a very high level, you should be able to describe what exactly is a neural network, how exactly uh, self-attention works, what is transformer, what is RNN, what is CNN, all of these steps at a very, very high level. Additionally, you need to dive into LLM specific skills like NLP techniques, language models, and retrieval augmented generation. But just watching videos like these or just learning the podcast won't get you that far until and unless you gain practical experience by doing it by your own hand. I'm not asking you to start applying for internships in NVIDIA because no, hardly uh, anyone is going to get it. I'm not asking you to apply for internship in uh, Hugging Face or Meta, but um, what I'm requesting you to do is to just do it by your own hand. You can try it out with Olama, for example. You can try it out with uh, renting a GPU from any cloud. I already have one of um, promotion going on with mass compute where you can use their token and i will drop it in the video description which you can use to get 50 percent discount but the point is that try to do it with your hand uh, i try to make my videos as hands-on as possible from start to end so that you can simply follow it along but my recommendation is that not just watch them do them try to follow the steps as i do it if you get stuck please feel free to put it in the comments and I'll be happy to answer. It might get delayed, but I will get to it eventually. Also, it's always a good idea to learn do short courses and stuff. And there are heaps of um, avenues there which you, can, which you can go. Coursera is good. YouTube is littered with courses. Uh, Stanford is offering few courses, so feel free to go through them. Another good thing is to do networking, keep following the people who are matter in the industry. I'm not going to name them. Um, you can, of course, subscribe to various YouTube channels and there are a lot of them. Very, very good, uh, you know, watch through them. Try to broaden your horizon as much as possible. So by combining theoretical knowledge with hands-on experience and a commitment to ongoing learning, you'll be well equipped to excel as an LLM or AI engineer in no time. Now let me tell you in specific words what exactly you need to learn to become an AI engineer. First and foremost, make sure that you know what LLM is or large language model is and then you need to learn how to effectively run and utilize those models. You need to know that what are 
LLM uh, which are API based like OpenAI's API, Hugging Face or Gemini, Claude, Anthropic. So you need to master the APIs provided by these LLMs. The good thing is that most of them are OpenAI's compatible. So even if you just learn OpenAI's API, you should be good to go. And then another thing is that you just need to know how to integrate these APIs with various applications. It's actually easier than you would think because all you need to do is to just drop in the OpenAI compatible code into your Python, JavaScript or whatever you are using. And then you need to learn how to optimize API cost calls and to balance cost and performance. And that is very important because this cost can go out of hand fairly rapidly. So make sure that you are cost conscious from the day one. Don't make it an afterthought. Make sure that you try to do it as you go. Next step, after you have learned LLM, make sure that you learn about vector storage or vector databases. You could, or in other words, you could say that you need to learn what is retrieval augmented generation. Now here is the thing. AI is not all about generating images from text. It is not all about chatbots. The real business value comes when you get your own business data, no matter where, where it is stored, whether it is stored in the legacy DB2 database, Oracle database, your Jira, your Confluence, your um, any support, CRM software or any sort of software, you need to get that data out and then you need to provide that data to LLM so that whenever you are asking your business related questions, LLM would give the responses more or totally grounded in your own application application or data that is what rag is all about so you need to learn what is rag what is rag pipeline how do you ingest your own data how do you chunk it split it how do you convert that data into numerical representations or embeddings how do you retrieve it after re-ranking it what sort of uh, re-ranking or embedding models are there which one is good which one is expensive how you can use it and all that stuff and then you would need to settle on do you already have a vector store maybe you are already using postgres database in your enterprise all you need to do is to just enable an extension um, on that postgres and you will have your own vector database or if you want to go with any cloud based or you want to host it locally and there are heaps of them i already have done videos on all of them so just search the channel so this is what you need to know and then you would need to know how to build your own rack pipeline from orchestrator to retriever and what sort of memory you are going to use for the context and then how you are going to evaluate and instrument it and monitor it and there are heaps of tools i have done heaps of videos on it but make sure that you are aware of it and you learn through it next up you need to make sure as deploying an llm is one thing Optimizing the whole ecosystem around LLM is a totally different thing. There are a lot of things there. So maybe you would need to use flash attention, but that is dependent on the GPUs because there are few GPUs which support it, many of the modern ones, and there are few which doesn't support it. And you need to make sure you are using the latest versions and stable versions of, for example, Transformers, PyTorch, and that sort of thing. And you need to make sure that you are utilizing the latest techniques like a key value or kv cache for faster retrieval and then how caching can reduce redundant computation then speed up responses or maybe a new and novel method of parallelizing and optimizing decoding processes to speed up text generation without sacrificing quality so the point here is that i just mentioned this kv cache and speculative decoding there could be any other thing too but i haven't really Put it in here i just gave it this an example another thing you could say around data sets as for example if your uh, the data set which you are giving it is not good enough um, maybe you would need to do the supervised fine tuning you need to do direct preference optimization maybe you just need to do the quantization of the model or if you are already using quantization performance is not good enough maybe you just need to dequantize it and go with full precision so there are a lot of things which you need to do and you can read through them one by one 
and then similarly you would need to make sure that you know how you are deploying the llm for example if you work in a defense or very very sensitive organization you might just the only option you might have is to deploy the llm locally on your own systems or maybe you just want to uh, take advantage of some cloud offering maybe you just want to go with public cloud the hyperscalers like aws azure or gcp alibaba or you just want to go with gpu cloud like mast compute run pod and there are a lot of others or <clears throat> maybe your use case is to deploy it on the <clears throat> iot devices or on mobile devices or uh, you just want to have a mixed environment few llms are on the cloud few are api based few are local that sort of stuff depends upon your specific use case but as an a engineer you need to make sure that you <clears throat> design that solution last but not least llm security should be the cornerstone of your ai application and um, your ecosystem you should implement robust security measures to protect llms from various attacks and that starts from uh, prompt safety or i mean you just need to make sure that your prompts are not uh, jail breaks they are not uh, toxic ones and then there are a lot of tools which i have sh shared on the channel you need to make sure that your llms are safe i mean just don't go out there because on uh, hugging face everyone is putting on the llms uh, make sure that whatever llm you're downloading especially for your business for your production use it is from a reputable provider and you have run all the checks and balances um you need to make sure that security should be proactive so that you don't need to be aware of latest security trends what bugs and loops holes are being found in the latest libraries make sure they are all up to date and patched so in summary becoming an llm engineer involves mastering a broad and deep set of skills spanning model running your retrieval augmented generation programming skills inference optimization security deployment so lot of hands on uh, training is needed and remember this is on the bleeding edge it is many of the things they are very new full of bugs for example i present you tools almost every day and llms every day so uh, most of the time i have to spend hours and hours to get them right because they are full of bugs i have to do the workarounds i have to research i have to come up with lot of parameters and stuff to get these things right even the uh, information on their github repos hugging face model cards they are not uh, good enough so you have to uh, be ready for that pain uh, but once you are go through that pain the other side is quite uh, fulfilling so that's it guys i hope uh, this was useful and i was able to answer a lot of questions here still if you have any questions please put them in the comments and if you have any insight or any practical experience from the trenches please do me a favor and share it in the comments if you like the content please consider subscribing to the channel if you are already subscribed please share it among your network as it helps a lot thanks for watching